On today's episode of Gathering the Kings. She goes, you want to know the difference between you and me? I was a little scared to get this. But yeah, I seriously. Scared. And she goes, the only difference between you and me is I acted. Ooh. And that was like taking a knife and sticking it in my back. And she was like, she's right. Like, yeah. you have the idea. You just haven't gone after it. And that's it. Yeah. But do you have the guts to go? What's up, everybody? I'm Chaz Wolf, Gathering the Kings podcast coming at you. I'm your host. Today, I've got EJ Bowen here on the King stage. My brother, EJ, how we doing? I'm, I'm good. It's good morning. Good Monday. It's always a good morning, and it's always a good Monday, you know? I don't know about you if you take the, the weekend to, to do family stuff, but I typically do. And so I'm like chomping at the bit Mondays to get back to it. So here we are, ready to rock and roll. <laughs> oh, for sure. Keep on excited to be here. Good, man. We're glad that you're here. Tell us what kind of business that you have. So I, I have, a, I'm not just a single entrepreneur. I do several things, which kind of like what we were talking about earlier. Like, I think that's yep. most entrepreneurs yeah. were, were, we have a little bit of ADD in us. That's right. But, Healthy but or I, not, I, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, so, but so basically I, I have several things. My first foray into doing my own thing was I, I own a restaurant. Okay. So I own a fast food restaurant that does pretty well. Then we have, from there, I, I started a, an IT consulting company probably four or five years ago, pre-COVID, and then it evolved significantly during COVID. I'm sure. And then from there, I, I took in, I started doing some things on Amazon. And so we design, manufacture, and sell things on Amazon. Okay. And then my last thing that we work on is kind of tied back to my IT consulting company, but it's more of a... A company that does, we call it fractional labor, fractional executives, fractional leadership. It's where small to mid-sized companies need help with, call it a CFO, but they can't afford a full-time one. Yeah. They need more for five or 10 hours a week. And we, we have, we've built up a large network of people that like to work on the fraction. And so we do it from across all business units and everything like that. So love so, it. You know, that's the gamut of what I do today. I'm sure it'll change tomorrow, but it's just the way, it's just the way it rolls. So. Yeah, well, I, I can appreciate that. Like we were talking about before the the recording started, you know, being a serial entrepreneur is, I, I, you're right. I think a lot of entrepreneurs are like that. It's tough to be, I think, a successful serial entrepreneur because of the ADD, right? Like the same thing that got us into multiple pots is the same thing that keeps us in multiple shallow pots as opposed to yeah. having real depth and real, real success and real wealth in those. So I definitely want to maybe pick your brain on some of those things that uh, you've used to overcome that here in the past. But before we get started too much, my first question is always the same, and it's about like what's beating on the inside of you. So for EJ, what wakes you up in the morning? What's the bigger picture? What's the burning desire? What is all? What's the what's the inner part say? Now you know it, it's kind of funny you, you ask that question. So when I was a kid, I wasn't the best student. You know, when I was younger, and maybe that's a lot of entrepreneurs. I mean, I, I did fine, but I was not your A plus student. And when I was younger, I had some. I had one. One teacher, I mean, I was in probably sixth grade or something like that. And they're, they're talking to me and they're like, what do you want to be when you, when you're older? And I, all I, I mean, I wanted to be an inventor and I didn't know what that meant. I just wanted to create things. Right. And yeah, yeah. And it's really cool when you have cool teachers that want to help push you. Right. And just help you get from where you are to where you potentially want to be. And she bought me this book of just creating stuff you know, taking paper and plastic and things and just creating scenes. And I started doing that. And I think. Wow. What was the biggest challenge when I was working for companies was I never felt like I was creating something. I was always yeah. creating someone else's something. And so what gets me up in the morning now is I want to create something that's mine and I want to create something that's new that helps other people. And I'll, I'll give you kind of an example. I mean, so I, I'm a pretty recent dog owner and I have two of them now because you, once you have one, you need another. I guess it's like they a, need a friend. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, but what I like, just kind of an example is like I, I went out and I was walking dogs and I had, you know, I, I just think, I think we all get to think a lot more when we're out moving around and, you know, whether it's exercising, walking, whatever. And That's right. I, I came up with just a new type of dog leash and harness that, that could work for, for dog owners, which was really a cool process for me. You know, it was like kind of going through, it was like, how do we design this? What would this look like? And that was really kind of taking my childhood, here's a book on how to be an inventor and then being old and going, wait, how would we actually do this and make, and, yeah. you know, 
conceptualize it and make it into a parameter. So you know, that's cool. that was a long way of answering your question, but you know, no, I think, yeah, it's the, it's the story behind it. And, and I think that there's a lot of inventors listening. There's also a lot of people that aren't, <laughs> they're very yeah. linear in their thinking. They're not very creative and that's okay. Like both can be successful in business. We both know that, but for you, particularly what brings you life is is creating it, it, the words that you use there actually resonated with me a little bit. I've never had anybody kind of put it exactly like what you said, which was when I was working for somebody else, I was, I wasn't creating. And if I was creating, I was creating their thing, which really probably didn't feel like creating. It was, you know, something else. And so I think that even in my own history, my profile does really good in jobs because I can lead, I can this, I can cross T's like, you know, I'm a great, person to work inside of an organization. But I've always had a little bit of a, like a pot stir thing about me, which is the entrepreneurialness. Yeah. And it's like, you know, if I felt like I was creating something and I look back at my own history, I'm like, you know, those moments I, I was just a number. I wasn't create like, yeah, I wanted individualism, you know, which spurs, I think a lot of people listening right now. So it doesn't have to always look like a new, brand new product though. No, not at all. And no. I'll give you kind of an example too. I have a good friend of mine that used to be an entrepreneurship professor at the University of Utah. And he was first an entrepreneur. And then he, I think a lot of entrepreneurs want to give back in that way too. Yeah. Like, let me go be an adjunct professor or something. And he actually got a, I think they call it an EDD, like instead of a PhD. And he, he went out and he started teaching and he did all these different things. And I talked to him about it and I'm like, how did you become who you are and what you actually did before this? And he, and he goes, because you have patents. Like what, why, why do you have patents? And I don't. And he goes, you know, the, and he's like, the funny thing is, is you don't have to be an inventor to have a patent. That's you, right. You just have to have an idea and a team. And, and he's got a bunch and I have other friends with patents and like, that's really kind of what it is. And I'll, I'll give you kind of one of the things that got me going and, you know, maybe I'm taking this a little off script for you, but. When I was working for a really big company, uh, Cisco Systems, right? Really big company, you know, fortune, whatever, you know, they do billions and billions of dollars a year. And yeah. I was working with this one, one woman who lived on Pebble Beach. Okay. And I'm like, well, shoot, why are you, first of all, why are you here? And second of all, how did you get to live on Pebble Beach? It's, it kind of sounds like you lived my dream of being that person. And she goes, you want to know the difference between you and me? I'm like, I'm, I, I was a little scared to get this. But yeah, I seriously. But, and I, she goes, the only difference between you and me is I acted. Ooh. And I was like taking a knife and sticking it in my back. And she goes, and it was like, she's right. Like, yeah. you have the ideas. You just haven't gone after it. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. It's like, do you have the guts to go? You know, and, and that was that was the opening moment of going... I've been, I need to do, I need to start being me in, in opening up. And so anyway, yeah. that ho hopefully that kind of helps you get, get into a little bit of where my brain works and how everything goes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a huge thing. The guts to go, as she said, you said is a big part of the initiation, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but then you've done a bunch of work, <laughs> you know? To yeah. implement on those things. And you it's almost like you have to like rehab guts, guts to go again over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Of course, you've had to do that multiple times in multiple different businesses. But even if someone's listening today and they only have one business, they've got to have guts to go at it again today, at it again this week, at it again this year or month, you know? So I think that there's, there's a realness to what you're saying. Don't be a talker, be a doer. <laughs> no, it's not, and honestly, that's... One of my business partners actually, he's like, that's the thing I, he admires about me. And I'm like, well, I don't know that I'm that great, but he's like, he's like, you don't wait around. It's like, you, it's like almost a little bit of ready fire aim, but it's more like understanding what direction you need to go in and being able to, to learn and iterate is really yeah. being willing to learn and iterate because you're going to make a lot of mistakes, whether you wait 10 years or one year, it's like having, it's like getting married or having kids. I mean, you're going to screw up, Yeah, you know? And the only way you learn is by going through it yeah. and, and you just have to keep iterating. Otherwise, I mean, you'll never get to where you want to go. So. Yeah. 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 I was telling you actually, before we hit the record button, that inside of gathering the Kings on the mastermind side, we've got this phrase of grateful, not done. And it kind of encapsulates what you were just talking about, because if 
we can be okay with where we're at. We can be grateful. It's not necessarily okay. Content sounds like, ugh, like not growing, yeah. but I can be grateful. You know, I can have an understanding and an appreciation for the view that I've, I have now, but if I'm never, if I'm not continuing to iterate and go to the next level, then, then I'm not growing. I'm not doing what I've been called to do in my business, in my marriage, in my family, whatever, whatever area of life we're talking about, we should always be trying to go to, you know, the level upon level upon level upon level. I've got a question for you about your your story. Yep. You know, you've you <laughs> you gave us a little bit there about your you know kind of had the the knife and that maybe shoved you off the edge. But what'd you do at that moment? And then how did that you know give us a little bit of a snapshot between then and and now today having multiple companies, successful companies? Yeah, you know it, it's and that's a really good question because I mean, you have to be able to take it from the motivation to to do it. Just because you're motivated doesn't mean you'll do. I mean, I want to lose weight, but that doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, and, you know, I want to be, you know, I don't want to get smarter, but am I reading more books, you know, whatever right. it may, may be. And so I'll, let me give you, I'll take it all the way back to a long time ago. I was the kid that was at scout camp selling candy out of his tent. <laughs> you know, I had a paper out when I was 10, you know, I, I always like, I didn't grow up in a super wealthy family. It was like, if you wanted something, you had to go get it. And then you know, you go through, you go through school, everyone's telling what you, what you need to be. You need to, right. you know, go, go to college. You need to get an MBA. You need to get all of these things. And the thing is, is all of those things where they're all great and they all teach you a lot of stuff. They put you into this box of going out and you need to work in corporate America, which is not a bad thing. I mean, honestly, the majority of the world should go out and work in corporate America. I mean, it's, it's a great thing because not everyone wants to take on the pressures of doing it yourself or, yeah. you know, maybe they won't understand the pressures until they try and then maybe they go back, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, it's a, so it's a little bit, of, it's, it's a little different. And so as I kind of went through all of those things, I did all of those things. I got jobs. Everyone says you should be in finance and you should learn all of these different things. And this is how you yeah. become a great, a great entrepreneur. And the other challenge with that though, is you keep making more and more money and you keep being moved up in these different companies. Yeah, exactly. You, you get the handcuffs, right? And you're like, how am I going to replace two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year? Like, how am I going to do that? And, and the short answer is you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that in my mind going, good luck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's going to be another 10 years and you're going to replace it after that time, but you have to be willing to step back and say, it's okay. You have to get to the point where it's like, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, and I even talked to a lot of different people where it's like, man, I can make all this money working for other people. Why do you work harder and make glass or do whatever it ends up being? And, right. and, and you're like, yeah, but I don't think you really get it. You're, you're going to work because you want to make money. I want to go to work to create. Yeah. I don't want to just, you know, push paper or sell products or whatever. I want to do something that, that I leave behind. I don't care what my LinkedIn profile says. If I'm a VP, CEO, C, whatever, it doesn't really matter, right? So what ended up happening then? So that kind of takes me up to making a lot of money and trying to figure this thing out. And so this is the way every story should start. But I was in Bali with my wife, just okay. sitting on the mountainside <laughs> and, and just telling me, what have I done? <laughs> you know? That's awesome. And, and it was that moment where it was like, okay, but the same question, you know, that I, or a thing that I said before, where you don't have to be a creator to own something or build something. You don't have to do right. it. Cause I'm not, a, I'm not a developer, you know, I'm not an engineer. I'm not the, you know, the things that, you know, you always look at and say, I need to be this to create something. Right? Sure. And, and the answer is that's really just not true, but it's hard to get past that. It's like, what can I do as a person who knows this thing over here so that I can become something that I want to be? And, in yeah. the beginning, it was like, well, shoot, let's, you know, that's when my restaurant came out. You know, I started going down the path. I'm like, well, what if I were to go out and be an owner operator of a Chick fil A? <laughs> you know, so I actually interviewed for that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but, but out of the 170,000 people they interviewed and, you know, 100 that got an actual, you know, franchise, I was not one of them. And that was okay. Right. But I kind of started opening yeah. my mind. Taking a path and taking the initiative of how can I become different and lead my own life? That was like the first step. 
Yeah. And I have a, I have a great wife. She, she's always helping pushing me along and she, she actually went out and found a whole bunch of business brokers. And so this is at the point where you're like, okay, well, maybe I can find something that I can drive myself that yeah. maybe be, can be a little bit more passive. Yeah. You know, I don't have to buy a job, you know, I can keep doing what I'm doing, but I can have something that kind of goes up. And so at that point we found one pretty close to where we live. Do it look like the numbers make sense? So we bought, <laughs> not knowing what we were getting into, but we bought. <laughs> yeah. You thought it was going to be something, but it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The numbers, like the one, the one piece of advice I always tell people when they're buying a, buying a business is not like, I'm just, I'm just going to tell you this right now. It's not what it shows on paper, you know, because there's all sorts of things that are moving around and, and not that they're lying, but they're manipulating or tweaking the numbers to make it look the best they could possibly make it look. Yeah. And so it's not that it was bad. It, it was, it was fun. We had a, a, a full-time manager that wanted to stay on. So that worked out really well. That was luck. You know, he did a really great job. That's kind of a key in any business. And I'm sure you've seen this with everything you oh, yeah. know, if you don't have a good manager, then it's your job. And then it, it's just really hard to do everything. Yep. Yeah. And, and we grew it a ton. Like we took it from doing a half a million to $1.2 million a year. And, and it became a really great little, little business that we put in, I don't know, 10 hours a month, you know, yep. looking at the books and checking in on things and, and making good money. Right. And and that, that was kind of like the first step in like, okay, I can do this. This is like the yeah. first piece of like confidence that I was looking for where it's like, I can, I can do this. Yeah. Even though I lost a lot of sleep. <laughs> uh huh. Some of so, you know, you, you're going to lose a lot of sleep and going, well, what if this goes wrong? What if someone walks in and like, in, in this case, it was, we weren't a hundred percent ADA compliant. But it was an old building. It was like a 1976 building. And we're like, well, technically, you know, we get a little bit of grandfathering in. But at the time, there was a person who was going around with their, in like with the tape measure and measuring oh. if your bathroom yeah. worked or if the, you know, if the countertop was, you know, low enough for, which it should be. I mean, we should absolutely take care of everybody. But, but sometimes it's not something that you can really can control. And so I can. Yeah. I ended up making some investments so I could sleep at night and changing up <laughs> so that could make it worth it. But those are the kinds of weird things that you don't think about when you go to work every day because you're just That's doing right. the job that you do. You don't think about, well, what if someone sues me? Yeah. You know, what, how is this going to work out if this, if this goes wrong? And so, so those are, those are just little pieces. So I kept working, I kept doing my, my job at Cisco. I moved into some other stuff and got more into that more deeply into IT. And then that's where it was more like, okay, I, I know the business side and that's where I could start up. This is more where I actually had a health incident where I was laying in a hospital bed. Wow. And, and I, I looked at, I basically laid there and I'm like, you know what? If 10 years from now, if I look back 10 years and I go, wow, I really failed. I really sucked at being an entrepreneur. I won't be mad. Like, I'm not going to be mad. That's fine. Like, but if I look back 10 years from now and I didn't try, I'm going to, yeah, be yeah. Yep. And so that, yeah. So at that moment, I, I started building up a business plan to create a systems and in, systems integration company, COVID hit, totally changed everything, you know, turned it into more of a, you know, call it a brokerage and a high end IT labor type of, you know, company just kind of started really building that thing up into something that it could be. And, yeah. you know, and that was where I'll tell you the, the thing where I truly got the confidence that I could do it was the first day somebody paid me something to do something for them, mm. where it was more like, you know what, we're for real now. We actually, we had a company that makes millions and millions of dollars give me money that they need to invest in something yep yeah so then it was like no we could do this we just need to do it more yep. you know? yeah yeah we, we just kept building it up and finding opportunities and finding different ways to market and then it was that was more of like that full confidence of like yeah we could do this and we can replicate and we can do it more often so yeah You've given, I mean, obviously you got a, you got a great story just of different types of experience and even just the overcoming with the restaurant, <laughs> a lot of truth there. We could probably do a whole podcast on yeah. just the service hospitality industry. But my question for you in some of these years, especially as you were talking about, well, we did this and we needed more. And so we did this, we did that. 
what are some of the practicals? Like, what's a good decision that you made that helped you scale that or helped you just put that thing together now for multiple years? Something that maybe we could take away and put in our own business. I mean, there's a, a lot of them. I mean, I think I think a big thing with, in the beginning was was trusting people, you know, trusting that they can do their job. And it, I mean, watch and make sure that they're doing their job too, but don't be that micromanager and, and let them be their innovative self and get the things done. That would be more having a good manager in the service industry, right? Maybe so that we can get out and get it done right. I will tell you, in, as you, and, and you kind of alluded to this, you know, how do you have multiple companies and, and keep it going? And I'll tell you, that is the biggest challenge. You know, that is, that's a massive challenge because then you end up being a jack of all trades and mediocre at all. And so you yeah. have to find ways to multiply yourself. That's right. And, and so whether it's using virtual assistants, finding people that want to come in as a partner that will, you know, kind of go at risk. Deciding when you want to take, you know, when you should be investing in uh, any of your own money into a, into a business for people or process or technology. And we've all wasted money doing that, but finding the right things and, and understanding and talking to people that have been there and done that so that you can minimize your uh, mistakes, you know? And so, yeah. so yeah, I mean, the big thing is like finding ways to multiply yourselves, whether it's through people, process or technology. So that you can be more efficient. I mean, if you look at it even today, just in the last six months with things like ChatGPT that have come out, right. being able to leverage that kind of stuff to just make yourself and your companies more efficient. Those are the kinds of things that you're looking for, whether it's a technology or a person or whatever. I mean, so that's that's probably the biggest thing, you know, to yeah. make everything. Yeah, it's a huge point of leverage, really, what you're breaking down. But I I, I so appreciate your perspective towards it not just being people. Of course, you can build teams and and people themselves are, it's a collaboration of leverage, right? Like you're giving something to them, they're giving something to you. It leverages the effort for you to be able to scale. But in addition to that, it's technology, it's systems, it's SOPs, it's things that are written down. It's things that, you know, maybe, maybe I learned something today on this show from you that then I go implement. Like I have to be able to put myself in proximity to people, systems, you know, nuggets, you know, all of it is, is leverage. And so I just really appreciate that perspective. Let's flip the coin here. I want to know of a bad choice, something that you did. I mean, there's probably plenty of them. You got a lot of businesses. So <laughs> bad choices. I mean, here's, here's the number one. So you got to get into business. If you're going to go alone, that's fine. That's hard. Usually you're going with a partner. It, it's like a marriage and you better make sure that that partnership is right. And so I have my, where I absolutely appreciate my first partner for helping me have the confidence to go, right. it was not the right fit. And it was probably more because I wanted it so bad that I was willing to just take it. That's right. right. And he knows that- Which is I part of the story though, right? Like you, yeah. if you, if you hadn't done that, you wouldn't be where you are. Exactly. And it's, and it doesn't take anything away from him. He's a great person. Like we just were not a really good fit. And I, and I kind of came up with this, this thing when you're looking through with partnerships, there's really three things it's got to hit on. Okay. Okay. You know, first you both have to be as much in as the other one, because if yeah. one person is going to do more work than the other, someone will always be angry. You both have to have the same risk or financial investment in it, or again, someone will either feel like they are more invested and the other will may, may feel like they're an employee right. because you're, you know, I'm taking the risk and you're not, therefore I need you to bust your butt and I'm going to watch you. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you don't all have the same level of risk, then it's, it just isn't going to work really well. Yeah. And then the last one for me and, and this, you know, take it for what it's worth for anyone who's, you know, listening, but you got to have the same understanding of business, you know, yeah. or at least almost like a hurdle that you need to be able to get over on, on the business level. I don't, I mean, I, I joke around about this today with, with some people, but it's almost like, don't come to me and say, everything's a write off, <laughs> you know, just write it off. Cause it's you not know, right. Cause it's not like you've spent money. And that's not a write-off that's called an expense. And so it's like, it's just, it's like basic things like that. You need to have like this basic level of business acumen to where you can go, okay, I get it. 
That's why we would make decisions like this or not make a decision in this other direction. And if you can hit on all of those, obviously you got to get along. And those are, I mean, you're never going to get business with any of those other ones. The problem is the things that you can't see below the surface, which right. usually creates a partnership that just goes south. And you, I, I would guess that most entrepreneurs have one or have a story where it just didn't work, but you, you got to have your simple rules of partnerships. Yeah. Of if you don't clear this, yeah, I'm not, I'm, we, we, it's not going to work. We're just going to end up having a bad day. So let's not do it. Yeah. Those are really tough conversations. And I think anybody who's been through it knows it, but for the guy or gal listening right now that has never been through it, it's like, it, it makes sense. Like I hear you. Okay. EJ, this, 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 but when you sit down at the table to discuss what happens when X doesn't happen or mm -hmm. how much is the time that I've put in so far actually worth so yeah. that we can be equally yoked. How much do you need to put in? Like th these are like real conversations that you have to be like in alignment before you can even get to the place that you're talking about. Yep. And it's like, man, you got to like muck through that type of conversation because it's real. There's emotions, there's people, it's sticky, you know? Yeah. I invented this. It was my idea. I did this. And you're taking my thing away. And you're like, I mean, no. <laughs> yeah. You know, that dude doesn't want to partner though. Like, let's just be honest. The guy that's yeah. saying that out loud doesn't want to partner. He wants to do it himself. And, and being equally yoked is important. Like you said, it's like a marriage. How can, how could we be if we're not on each other's team? Like literally. Yeah. And it's, it's a, it's a challenge and, and, you know, and I think every partnership has its day where, you know, you got to have a conversation, but you know, the, the question is more like, are you set up in the point where, when you have to have tough conversations, like in a marriage, I mean, shoot, we all screw up and we're all mean sometimes, you know? And Some more than it, others. We yeah. <laughs> we, we don't mean it. We don't mean it. Or we yell at our kid or we do something like, man, I really shouldn't have done that. You exactly. know, we all have to have these conversations in life. And, and just remember when you have to have that conversation or in business, it's no different. And, and honestly, it may even be more emotional because you're talking yeah. about people's languages and how everything can work. And it, what, at some point you have to go, you know what, this just isn't right. You yeah. know, maybe we should, we should break up and, you know, walk, go our separate ways and that's okay. And I think that's probably a learning, learning piece too. Cause I was, I, I probably knew a long, long before it didn't work out that it wasn't going to work out. And it's kind of having that confidence to go, you know what, I'll figure it out. You know, right. I'll figure out things I don't know, but I don't think this is working. And I think we yeah. need to probably move. So move, move on. Yeah. You got to do what's right. Hey, kings and queens, Chaz Wolf. I want to talk to you about something that's super important to me. We put a lot of time and effort, we meaning myself and my team, into this podcast, into the content that goes out every single day. And if you have been getting any sort of value or insight from this, we want it to be able to reach other business owners too. So we would love if you would like, comment, share, leave a review, post, share again, <laughs> all of the things on social media, on all the different platforms, or even on the podcast mediums of Apple and Spotify. We would love to be able to get our content into more hands, more entrepreneurs, so they can grow their business as quick as possible. Together, we are building a community of like-minded entrepreneurs who are committed to growing their businesses to new heights. So let's do this. Let's help each other. Let's help each other grow. Yeah, man, I think that there's a lot of great value in putting together, you know, equally yoked partnerships like we were talking about. I think that there's, you know, there's real work is in essence what you're saying that goes into that and yes. time like those things often don't just happen with somebody you met last week. No, no, not you. And if you did meet last week, I would suggest just, you know, maybe date a little while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good stuff, man. Okay. So I got to ask you a KPI question. I love, okay. I love this question in all of your businesses. I'm not even going to ask you one particular one. I want to know high, high level. What is the one thing that you would track if you could only pick one? I mean, they all tie together. It's like they all roll down. But I, I mean, I mean, my first, my gut response is profitability. You know, you're EBITDA or something like Lama along those lines. Because if you're not making money, why are you doing it? But I have seen a meme out there too that said, you know, the there was that a picture of a guy smashing a keyboard next to someone else, and it was the accountant saying profitability before growth. 
know, more like you still need to be able to grow and in order to, if you're only just taking money out, then, then you don't have the ability to grow. But, but I think it, I think it's more like you need to be, it, it's like, what's your EBITDA? And then after that, it's where are you going to invest to grow? So it, it'd be kind of like a balance between the two. Yeah. Yeah. I received that. I think that it's not what you make, it's what you keep, right? That's the EBITDA question mm-hmm. or the EBITDA thought. But if, if, if we're making money just to keep the money and not to grow the money, that doesn't sound like an investment. No, so, no, no, you're not pushing. Something. I mean, I, I actually, I'll tell you, like, this is where, and sorry right. if I'm taking you off the to here again, but this is kind of where like a, an employee doesn't understand being an entrepreneur. Right. Like when, an, when someone hires somebody, they're making an investment to grow their business. But when an employee gets hired, they think that they're being hired to just do a specific job. And that's where a lot of times when riffs happen, it's more like the success factor. Like what, why, why do we need to have success? Like, well, it's because the only reason we hired that person or that role is so that we could grow a company. Right. Yeah. And, and it's, and you don't really, I don't know that you really see that until you're either really high up in a company or you're running it or you're running your own. And it's every dollar that you invest is not going into your own bank account. Yeah, you're right. And, and I'm not sure how many employees listen, but for the business owner who doesn't yet understand that there's a gap between themselves and their employees. So are there any tactical ways that you've been able to show your, your folks? I mean, I know I've done certain things with my, with my people to help them try to understand this, you know, but anything that you've done specifically you could share? I mean, it, it's the lower level, uh, you know, ground workers probably aren't going to understand it really well. You have a better chance of your manager and understanding it. And it's really just going through numbers and showing like how you're going to grow and, and what you're looking at, kind of like what we're just talking about looking at the EBITDA and then what you're going to invest back in and being able to show them that the only way that we can afford to give raises or bonuses is if we do X, Y, and Z. And it's because there, there just isn't money, you know? And then I think just kind of helping them see the picture is as an owner is probably the easiest or best way for them to go, okay, it clicked. Okay. We need to do this in order so that I can get a bonus or I can get this. We don't get bonuses for fun. You know, we get bonuses for value and that's where, you know, things can kind of come in. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. There's actually two pieces there. It's the, the initial investment of the person salary or the hourly mm-hmm. wage. And that is an investment because this, although the task is needed, it's money that the owner is saying, well, I'm going to choose not to do that myself <laughs> yep. or ask yep. you to do it on top of what you're already doing, I'm going to, we're going to pay somebody else. So it, it is an investment actually same as a, uh, as a marketing campaign or whatever. Yep. Uh, but then there's Follow also the, the, yeah, the piece of the value, the bonuses there. I love that. I love trying to correlate. If I do this, then this is the result. And how can I teach my people to think like that? I think that that's a great, and also too, what that, what that's the beginning foundation of, and, and this isn't necessarily a motivating factor for everybody, but it has been a huge part for me is that if I can help someone on my team understand what what you just said, then at mm-hmm. some point one day, potentially they have now the wherewithal to go run their own business. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. And if they're yeah. designed to do that and I was able to help them, why? I mean, now I, I would be robbing them and me of this moment of being able to be part of that story, you know? And think it, think of it this way. So like in the last 18 months, it's been really interesting just with, with inflation, right? And so people started coming to me and I'm sure come to all of the, you know, your listeners were like, I need to make more money or, you know what, I made this and you know what, I should make this now. Right. And in a lot of ways you couldn't get away without at least raising some stuff. Right. But there's, there's still with that level of going like, yeah, but we like, I'm making a lot less now because we can't increase prices enough to keep up with inflation to do this. So there's a, there's a gap in helping people be able to see like, yeah, inflation, it sucks. You know, for all of us, for all of us. you know, it's not yeah, great. I'll and, hold your hand. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah, exactly. And it's like, it feels like you make it last well, right with you, man, you know, but being able to sit down and go, yeah, I mean, there just isn't more because of this. And maybe if we do this, we can then continue to, you know, have other employees benefit. So yeah. The last thing that you just Real said, world pointed out for the listener different. is that when you said there just isn't more like that, that baseline it seems so simple that you would just say that there Mm -hmm. isn't more, but a lot of times employees, like you said, don't have the recognition of that. There's not just like a tree with money that, you know, just things just fall off of on just Benjamin's flowing on me. You know, (laughs) it's not like that. But, but in my experience, 
they often think that it is like that. They don't like actually think that there's a tree out back that produces money, but they think that there's just like the, this endless account or this endless Amex or something. Mm-hmm. We just keep swiping it and Chaz will take care of it or EJ will take care of it. And, yep. and they haven't thought outside of themselves m- more, more than likely far enough to realize that like, hey, it's not because I don't like you. It's and in fact, I actually really like you and I would love to do this. But in order to be able to do that, we got to do this because here are the numbers. X and X equals this. And and once, like you said, once that clicks for them, and so I'm encouraging the listener to have these types of conversations with their employees if they're not, especially the upper level management, like you talked about, because if 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 they understand, then it's like, oh, okay, I know how I know how to operate forward like an owner, so that there can be real money there, so that we can share in it. Yeah, exactly. How do you, last question here on that before we move on, how do you, how do you communicate to them that you do want to share, right? And then that you're not just trying to, you know, squeeze it all and take it all yourself. I mean, it, actions speak louder than words, right? You know, just little, little things and being able to give them back things when they're not expecting yeah. little Christmas bonuses or, you know, I mean, even in something as, you know, simple as owning a small restaurant, right? Giving out movie tickets or, you know, something that's really simple to just show that, you know, yeah, we want you to be happy and we want you to have things, you know, it's, I think it's, I think it's in the little thing that they see that you want to be sharing in the big things. Yeah. Yeah. It's the intentionality. I think that actually that principle that you just shared carries over every single relationship that we can think of in our own lives. It's just being intentional, even with the small things. And a lot of times the small things are actually much more important. Like you're saying, if done intentionally. Yeah. I got a question for you about yeah, business yeah. resources. I want to know what you've read, what you've listened to, what what can you share with us here today that has been beneficial to you? Oh, uh, man. I'll tell you the the most this is the most recent one, then I'd have to kind of probably go back and look at lists and stuff, but there there's a podcast, not to compete with your podcast, but That's all right. there's That's a funny. podcast called Yeah, it's called Marketing School. Love it. And it's the yeah, there's these two guys that basically have their own ad agencies have been at it for, they, you know, you said you're at the 300 levels of, of podcasts. They're in the, I think they're at like 3,000 levels. They've been doing it since, you know, like 2015. They've been doing it for a long time. And, and they are eight to 12 minute, like, blips of information. Yeah. And just like, here's what we're going to talk about today. Here it is. It doesn't take a lot to, to listen to them, but you can always take out what, you know, the, the nugget for you that you need to change when it comes to like business books or resources. A lot of it's just reminders. Like, I think we've all kind of been there, done that, heard it, tried it, but then it's more like, oh yeah, that's been on my list for a long time. Let's do it. You know, like simple things. I mean, I actually, here's one thing I, t- I took a, I, I talked about chat GPT earlier, but I took a course on chat GPT back in January because I wanted to just understand better how to use it. Right. And one of the things was like, because you have the ability to go out and create content. Now remember chat GPT is limited by the ability of the person who's creating information. And it it was more like everyone should write a book. Everyone should be out there. You should be a published author because you can. Yeah. And so that was one of those things where. You know, it was like the aha, yeah, we can go, I'll go, I'll go out there and create blog, blogs or articles or whatever, but there's, there, we have the ability to go out and actually create a short book on whatever it is that we do or whatever. And you can post it on Amazon Kindle and you can, now you have, you were a published author and now who are they going to work with? The person who's the published author or the person who's not? And like, wow, that's kind of cool. You got a book. You're probably pretty smart. Now, obviously it's a little bit of it let small gimmick, but, but on the other hand, make sure your content is good and you, you curate it, make sure everything is, you know, strong in there. And then at the end of the day, you have something that you can point back to that makes you an expert or at least helps people think you're an expert. Yeah. And it's about iteration. You talked about this already. You don't just, you know, give a couple of prompts and copy paste. I mean, you could, Yeah. but if you understand, it's garbage. The, yeah, it's garbage. It's not exactly yeah. what you wanted it to say, but if you can mani- if you can work with it, I almost said manipulate, but that's I guess a, the, the right term. Massage, yeah, massage. Yeah. There you go. Then then it can be yours. You just have you have an assistant, 
And I think that's the leverage mm-hmm. of that tool. So it's actually a great deal. So not only did I write down the the podcast where that started, but the book deal is quite inspiring. So I appreciate that. There's a couple that I have on my list that I'm that I'm writing. So I just I just sped up my right time over. Get it done. Seconds. <laughs> yeah. I love you it. Get on, and actually, I finally am getting I'm getting on one right now that I just I've been waiting on, and it's like yes, yeah, it's got to get done. So so yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. One of the books I want to write, I'm not 100% sure of the title, but something like I interviewed a billion dollars, and this is what it told me because I've interviewed so many guys like you, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, if not a few billion at this point. And it's like, there is some major lessons. And then I have the ability to look at going, wow, I can bring all these into about 13 success principles. Well, I'll tell you, so, and yeah, (laughs) This is something at the end, I probably get, by giving away my secret sauce, I shouldn't, but here's something that's been very helpful when it comes from the IT side. I actually reach out to, you know, business owners and CEOs and everything and basically say, Hey, I would like to interview you and write an article on you because I am writing a book and I want stories that I could take into that and put into that book. And right. most people are pretty vain and they'll, you know, they'll let you talk to them for 30 or 40 minutes. and. And then you write an article on that specific person in that discussion and what you learned, kind of similar to the way you're doing here. And then now you have all of this content that you've not created that you can then aggregate and then create, you know, with some next level type of type of learning situation. So, and then the fun part about that too, is you just interviewed an owner about whatever topic is you wanted. And now you have another friend that when you want to reach out and say, I want to sell something. You have another friend that you got to go back to and go, Hey, you know, would this be valuable to you? So, so anyway. Yeah. You're creating relationships and creating value, both of which you just said by reaching out and offering something of value at no cost, which, you know, is, yep. is how relationships are built. That's not how they're sustained because you can't, you can't, it can only, it can't just be one sided value. But yes. to your point, if you're, if you're really good at what you do, ideally that person wants to do the next thing with you anyway. Exactly. And what's I, I'm gonna I want to change course here, <clears throat> and I want to talk about family and 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 the word obsession because I think the word balance is ridiculous and and I throw it out of the window pretty much any time I can talk about it. And so instead, I feel I feel work life obsession. And so the obsession okay. in your businesses is is the same as what's going to make you successful in your family and your marriage, all that fun stuff. And so we just got back from Bermuda. We did a family mastermind cruise. And we did some deep marriage work with with some certified folks. And and I talked about this idea of work-life obsession. What have you done in your story, EJ, where you've been obsessed about those things, wife, kids, other things in life that you love, alongside of the businesses? No, man, because that's a short question. So I, I have a little bit of a, an alternative family. My wife and I both adopted, we adopted Eastern European orphans at, as teenagers. And so... I think we didn't really have much of a choice, but to be obsessed with trying to get them from point A to point B yeah. because they're coming in with significantly less education, obviously can't speak the language challenges in their lives that, you know, we've never, ever, hopefully never will have to experience. And so exactly. you have to create an obsession with, with improvement in giving them everything you can, because you're getting them at 14, 15 years old, and you've only got so much time to instill knowledge in them now. There has to be a balance with that though. Okay. So it's kind of like the, if you push too hard, you know, it breaks on the other side. So it's, it's more of like understanding where you need to be pushing and when you need to be taking off the gas, your foot off the gas and, you know, coasting a little bit and being able to, to, to balance that a little bit. But, you know, so basically what I would say, you know, I was probably obsessed with one of my kids being a, you know, a, a field goal kicker and he was really good. He was ranked top five in the nation. You know, and you know, so we would like try, trying to instill in him, you know, how you get from being the kid who's on the team to the kid who plays the, who the kid who's, who's great. And so I would say that that's probably a little bit, and, and, and I had to learn in there too, on how I, when do I need to, like I said, put on the gas, put on the brakes, coast, anything like that too. So yeah. I think I can kind of go into everything we're doing in our lives. If we obsess too much, it can, it can also hurt. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think the the obsessive nature can also be become suffocating is what you're referring to. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, there's there's no air. <laughs> there's no oxygen, yeah, there's no life when you suffocate exactly. whatever it is. So, 
That's good, man. I really appreciate the perspective and cool, cool for you and, and your family to be able to not only have those experiences, but adoption is kind of a, a crazy process. My wife and I have been through that. We, we didn't officially adopt any children, but we were having troubles getting pregnant and went through that whole entire scenario. And then, and then mm -hmm. boom, we got pregnant. And so, you know, it's an interesting perspective when you open up your mind, heart, home to, to yeah. a human that's a child. And so you're leading them, but they're not yours, but you love them. It's just a very interesting dynamic. So I just, uh, just want to give you some uh, public adoration for that. I just really no. appreciate your heart for that. Last question here. No, before I, you I want to know if you had the opportunity to whisper in the younger EJ's ear, what would you say? Uh, get the confidence earlier. Don't be afraid. Like I've had ideas since I was younger and I think I kind of took you know, one step and then diverted way too early. Like I should have been doing things yeah. earlier. Now it's a little bit easier now today with like the way technology works, but yeah, don't be afraid, go for it. What's the worst case that can happen? You have to get a job. Like, okay, like go for it, you know? And, and obviously I learned a lot along the way in different companies and with different leaders and stuff, but yeah. I think I probably should have jumped five to 10 years sure. earlier you know, versus way. Yeah. I had a guy in the gathering the Kings mastermind group say the other day, he said, I've become dangerous where I finally realized I can't fail. And that, yeah. that realization, you can, do it. you can get it done. Yeah. 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 Like I no longer have the, like, oh my gosh, if this all fell apart, then whatever I was thinking before, because I know, I know, now that I could get it back to your point, what would be the worst case scenario? I'd just go get a job. But even then, I don't even think you and I would do that. <laughs> We'd probably just start no, something new again. Well, there, there was a time when I used to watch the reality TV show, The Voice, and there was Adam Levine, the lead singer from Marine 5, said something basically to all of the, you know, performers, like, you know, do you want to be, if you want to be a musician, you can't have a plan B. And I think it's probably very similar when it comes to, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you can't have a plan B because the problem is that it will get hard enough at one point that you will take it. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have a plan B, you will figure it out. Success has a weird way. Tim Grover kind of talks about this in his book, Winning, but success has a weird, weird way of allowing us to get real, real close and then allowing us an escape route because it's just hard enough, just outside the reach. Yeah. Where we fold. Yeah. But uh, 100%. Totally right. Totally true. Yeah, that's right. Well, good, man. I appreciate you being here. How can the listener find you? Number one, you, you have a service, like you said, that every entrepreneur could potentially use as a fractional CFO. We, and then all the other stuff that you've got going on, potentially there's people listening right now that could use that as well. Tell us how to find you in those areas, how to even find you as an entrepreneur if we just want to connect with you. Yeah. Yes. I mean, come out, connect with me on, obviously I'm on LinkedIn. The... The, the two big websites that you can come back and really see the services. One is, is your neo gig.com. So your is in Y O U R and then neo gig, N E O G I G.com. That is the, the fractional executive, fractional leadership type of service. And then my IT services where it gets into more of like IT people similar in that, in that similar vein, you know, IT is the service and IT people is a service which is the company called Omni Legion Technologies and the website is omnilegion.com. And so you can, I mean, obviously the, the email address is there at ej at yarnyavig.com. And then the other one, you can get to me at ej omnilegion.com. Perfect. We'll put them in the show notes. Those are the easiest yeah, ways. And then, yeah, I'm always wanting conversations. I want to learn from everybody too. So, I mean, I, yeah, I have a lot of steering up to do. So I'd rather avoid it if somebody else can help teach me. So that's right. That's right. Yeah. I love that approach, man. There's humility in that answer. So thank you for being here. Blessings upon all that you have your hand to here in 23 and your family as well. Thank you for being here, man. Thank you for listening to Gathering the Kings today. I hope that you were able to pull out a few nuggets to go apply into your business right away. More importantly, though, I hope that you're realizing that it takes more to be successful than just being by yourself, doing it all on your own, carrying the weight all by yourself. What I have realized, not only in my own journey from multiple businesses and multiple different industries, and now interviewing over two or 300 other very successful seven, eight and nine figure business owners is that it's tough to do it alone. And so Gathering the Kings exists to 
bring together successful entrepreneurs. In fact, we are putting together 1,000 kings, specifically who are grateful but not done. We're intentionally assembling kings who fight tooth and nail for their business, family, and communities. And here's what we believe, that in the pursuit of excellence in those areas, that it ignites within us the responsibility to govern power and forge a lasting legacy. So if that relates and, and resonates with you, and you know that you need people around you, sharp, qualified, other very successful business owners, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. I want you to take a look at what we're doing and see if it makes sense for you to be part of our pursuit to 1,000 Kings. Talk soon.